Passing through the doors this week... A bit warmer than here. Three generations of Irishmen take a trip down memory lane. The father, the son and, and the grandson now. The Holy Ghost. But yeah, well... <laughs> Mom. Holy yeah, come Mark. in, come in. A bickering mum and daughter. Let's go. Struggle to keep the peace on their trip to Spain. Can't wait to get on the plane. So I won't be here week anymore. And for two golden girls, escaping to Formentera... What have you got here? phone. The holiday airport becomes the horror airport. My phone's got me boarding pass on, hasn't it? Meanwhile, staff need a head for heights out on the runway. I get scared at the top of the stairs. And an eagle eye in departures. When you've got large views, you can add anything. If there's any more, we can't find them. Welcome to John Lennon. The holiday airport. With two bars, nine eateries, 12 shops and even a beauty salon, Liverpool Airport isn't short of entertainment. I'm flying to Limoges today to see my partner. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Airport beautician Jade wouldn't want to be anywhere else. It also just grabs you in and then doesn't let go because you enjoy yourself that much and the time just flies. For both staff, front of house and behind the scenes, it's about making sure the customers feel right at home. Thanks very much, thank you. But every family has its fallings out. <coughs> Workmates of three years on the information desk, Mark and Alan, a proof of that. Mark, would you miss me if you were on a, on a desert island? Like would, a hole in your neck? Would I miss you if you were on a desert island? Yeah. <laughs> no. That's so rude, that's so offensive. No. 20,000 passengers a day pass through the doors of the holiday airport. But this morning, one special bunch requires special assistance from the team of dedicated volunteers. Getting up this town in the morning, volunteering. Crazy. Out in the car park, oh. airport volunteer George is waiting for a busload of believers on a pilgrimage to the sacred village of Lourdes. The Lourdes flight for them is all about uh, trying to get that little bit of... Uh, help with, I, I don't know what, I don't know whether it's religious or whether it's psychological or what, I don't know. But uh, they go to Lourdes for their own private reasons. We, we help out in whatever way we can. Yeah. Okay. Two bishops, two nuns, some members of the clergy and a group of elderly and sick are heading for the holy waters in the south of France. I'll try, I'll try and get to, go on, let me get to. George and the team of helpers just have to shepherd this flock safely onto their flight. We can go on this way. It's a bit warmer in here. Hey. Here they come. There's a coach load just turned up. Right, we've got three check-in desks. You can use any. With 56 passengers in total... completely waterproof, don't worry The helpers have a sophisticated technique for keeping tabs on their flock. We just give the people stickers on the lapels and then when they get to the gate, we know we can differentiate between ordinary passengers and the, uh, we call them saints and sinners. <laughs> 150 years ago in Lourdes, the Virgin Mary is said to have appeared and a sacred spring began to flow. Now, four million people journey to the site each year. But what are they hoping for? It makes me feel, you know, better than myself. We journey on the pilgrimage, we build up community. Every time I go there, I get something very special from it. I'm just going to get out of the world and charge my batteries, as it were. But can Our Lady of Lords compete with the lady's 95-year-old Lois Met on her last trip? I went to see the lady boys of Bangkok in Derby and um, I was treated as a VIP. They gave me a bouquet of flowers and I had a wonderful time, wonderful evening. Lots of timetables. We'll just sit and study them each day and say, oh, there's a market on there and we've got a bus timetable. Just 13 miles away on the Wirral, Sensible Sue is preparing for a short break in sunny Spain. Boarding pass. Electronically. With her best friend and close neighbour, 
Nancy. The all emergency hairpiece. I think what makes our friendship work is probably that we are a bit different. Mm. Could have filled me. I'm struggling to tell them apart. Well, we're very different, but then we have the same... It, we do have the same interests. interests. Yeah. Right. Not so different then. 55 by 45 by 20. That's the perfect measurement for hand luggage. One thing that does set these two apart is that Accountant Sue does everything by the book. And, just for the record, we do have measurements on the handbag as well. 35 by 20 by 20. It's all been checked. Were you never a rebel as a child? No. No, I didn't think you would no. be. It was a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> this worrywart is terrified of breaking the rules and having her bags taken off her. I'm out of control then, because I don't know where it's gone. It's in the hole somewhere. I haven't got a label on it. It probably looks the same as 100 other bags. What if I pick up the wrong one when I get to the other side? So many things that can go wrong. I think it's seven. As long as this is calibrated fine. I might have to just check when we get to the airport. Silly, really, isn't it? It's just the way you are. Yeah. Ooh, you ready? These two golden girls have been close mates for a quarter of a century. I'm a bit later than I'd like, so bags come on. Our friendship started, I think, when our children were little. I hope you weighed it because I did ask you to do it yesterday, then you didn't. No, I didn't. I forgot. Oh. I shouldn't do it now. We live close, so it's easy to keep in touch and do things together, whether it be shopping or holidays or just. Hanging yeah. out in each other's yeah. houses? It is. It is a bit heavier than mine, actually, but mine's only seven kilos. Oh. So you might be OK. I should be OK. Yeah. 25 years, and I haven't killed her yet. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go. To the airport. Okay. Here's the plane now. It's just landed. It's just, uh, just coming and taxiing in now. Back in departures, the flight to Lourdes has arrived, and it's time for Dave and the team of volunteers to round up their flock. So what we're doing now is just try and find some people in the... Uh, any, any people at all would be ideal, just so we can get some down to gate 30 and... I can't see any. Can you see any, Dave? What? This is more like herding cats. It's like the OK Corral. We're going to get them all rounded up. <laughs> it seems the saints have got round the sophisticated sticker system and they're mixing with the sinners. Just found three more of the kissing gate. All right. Coming up... I can't see any. Can you see any, Dave? Nuns on the run in departures. If there's any more, we can't find them. And it's not all happy holidays. Did it be get here? So. As more passengers head oh. to the holiday airport. Our relationship is like the two same ends of a magnet. And they're all running. It's funny how it can be like that, though, isn't it? One minute there'll be nobody, Nothing, and then and all then of a like sudden, Jurassic Park. The team of airport volunteers are still searching departures. You may be for Lewis. Yes, we are. Trying to head their holy flock onto the flight to Lords. Round them up, and then we get them out. I'll go and see if we can find them. And George yeah. still has several more wandering pilgrims to track down. This happens all the time. I'm just wondering whether there's any upstairs in the... Um... Well, I said to Ian, I'll go up there, he's going up, though. Did you meet any down the far end? No? Not yet. But there's definitely some missing. Come on, sisters, you're late. Hey, don't make a habit of it. <laughs> right, we found the last four. If there's any more, we can't find them. George has done all he can. We're going to be going through now. Time to get the last stragglers on board. Yep, everything's sorted, everyone's on. So, uh, what happened with that sophisticated sticker system? Awkward sometimes, because we were going to elderly people and saying, are you on the Lourdes flight? And they were saying, no. It's sort of, what are you asking me for? They were, look ill. 
Uh, anyway, we, we found them all. They're off to Lourdes. Hopefully they'll find what they're looking for. We're all happy, finished. Turn my lights off and everything, yeah. Golden Girls Sue and Nancy have arrived at the airport. The minute you roll that case across the little zebra crossing, this is the best sight ever in That is the beginning of my holiday. Here we come. This may be the palace of dreams for Nancy. <laughs> oh my god, where's my phone? But for worrywart Sue. The nightmare has just begun. What? It's about, do you know what? We what have you got? Phone? My phone's got me boarding pass on, hasn't it? So, I have got... Give me some no, I've got... Oh, no, I have got... Look. Oh, no. No? Yeah. I have got boarding passes anyway, but... Uh, Sue's caught in a flap on. before she's even through the doors. I have to panic, don't I? We're at the airport. How many times have we emptied keys on here? Thought they put my keys Bags, away as well. keys. First disaster averted. Hotches. It's time to enter the Chamber of Horrors. Feel like I need to. Despite her careful calibrations... Yeah. Be sure. Sue can't help weighing her luggage one last time. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Ooh, jumpy. What, never mind putting your... <laughs> <laughs> I take the same suitcase every time, and I measure it every time in case it's grown under the bed or something. <laughs> What are the terrors lie in wait for this professional panicker? My next thing to worry about is the um, queue at security. It does amaze you when people bring, like, knives and stuff. If you can't take tweezers... Yeah. ..why would you think of walking You can't take in? a nail file, but, yeah, we're going to yeah, let you take... Yeah, but we'll let you take this Swiss Army knife, knife. That's about... Yeah, we'll let you take that through. That's not drills, a problem. Saws. Me no understanding. Oh. At peak holiday season, 50,000 people pass through security at Liverpool John Lennon each week. And 7,000 bags are screened and checked by security staff like Debbie and Mo. Hair gel, never can't go. Baby's bum cream, never can't go. Baby's yoghurt, never can't go. Mo has worked at the airport for 13 years. Mince me, that can. <laughs> Nothing gets past her eagle eye. At least everyone knows now, at least we're clear. One comes through. That's it, thank you. Debbie is in charge of the entire security operation at the Holiday Airport. My job can be really serious, and it is a very serious job sometimes, but Mo's got the light-hearted feel, and it's like having a, a mum at work for me that, that'll make sure I'm OK and check things are OK after a hard day. A young mum, though. <laughs> Every day, the highly trained security staff here uncover a bin load of potentially dangerous items. So these are the sort of things that we're finding in people's bags. What's normal is people, they either at their own home abroad or they're working abroad. So rather than take, put them in a suitcase, put them in the hand luggage, they look at it as it's a tool for their job. So they don't look at it as a potential weapon which that, I won't touch that, because they, they are really, really sharp. Threats come in all shapes and sizes. Fluffy ones, but once you take the fluff off, there's still handcuffs underneath, obviously. And these are just, these, we get these every day, don't we? And again... Oh, you I don't can... have the key, you don't have the key. You're no, but, no, you just press it, look. You just press, I'm not going to lock it in. Just imagine we're thing. stuck on an aircraft together. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Fries, there's a hostess, right? And then I get my hammer, what I'm working with. Right, she's done this. We start by breaking her fingers. Oh, we're uh, bitter about the mum comment, are we? Turn round and go to Tokyo, wherever you want to go. It's just so easy, isn't it? And there's one word that's so dangerous, you have to spell it. If somebody mentions that they have the, the B-O-M-B word, you know, in an airport, then we have to investigate that further. It's not our job to say whether you're joking or not. So even if you're a gang of lads that think it's hilarious to shout the B-O-M-B word, we have to look into that and make sure that it is just a joke.
the Holiday Airport has a unique service for passengers looking to jet off in style. An express beauty and nail bar. We're the first salon in an airport, um, so it is quite different to anywhere else and you get that luxury feeling before you get on your plane. Oh, a nice name for a nail bar. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. That you're expecting us. Us Scousers, we love getting glammed up and even the men, they just love it. Panicky Sue has got through security unscathed. Well, this is the business, isn't this? This is how you start your holidays. Oh, yeah. This is great. What a great idea. Time to calm those nerves with a pedicure or perhaps something a bit stronger. I think I might, even though it is a bit early. A vodka and tonic, please. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Sue and Nancy are used to hanging out as a foursome with their husbands. We're going to a place called Formentera, Del Segura, right. which is... But for the next five days, they're leaving their men at home. It's the girly thing then, isn't it? For instance, if I was in my apartment with my hubby, the sports on and the telly, yeah. or the blokes get fed up because they're, they're waiting for the girls to get ready, we can just do what we want, mm. when we want, go where we like. There's nobody else to answer it to. It is the proper just... girly thing. Very welcome refreshment. Don't you think? I'd get it down my neck. <laughs> so if their husbands are at home, who exactly is it these two are trying to impress? I like to look good when I'm flying because you never know who you're going to meet while you're there for a start. She's got a point. Even I've been known to pass through the doors at John Lennon. In terms of celebrity spotting, I saw Prince or what was he called? I've no idea. Prince. Is he still alive? <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely alive, girls. <laughs> it's a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Better be. I've got tickets to see him next week. You can't go anywhere without eyelashes. Selection. Selection. Fifteen miles away in New Brighton, Spanish Mad Jody. Because I'm not very good at doing eyelashes, I often blink and they end up stuck there. So I need spare ones is about to jet off to a holy festival in her favourite town in southern Spain. I really love Ayamonte, and I sometimes say to my husband, this is the place I consider my home. Each year for eight years, Jodie has gone to the same town, Ayamonte, with her husband, Phil. But this time, he can't make it, so she's taking her mum, Jane, instead. Here we go. There's just one problem. <laughs> These are essential for going anywhere with my mother. Earplugs. Our relationship is like the two same ends of a magnet. Do come in. Oh. Make a cup of tea. No, because you've got no milk. I brought it for you. We fight more than we don't fight. We argue about everything. OK, then. Let's go. What really annoys me about my mum is everything. <laughs> what really annoys me about you is more than everything. <laughs> Jodie and Jane have never gone on a mum and daughter break before. Could the Holy Festival be a miracle cure for their relationship? I guess there's just that little part of me that thinks we'll have we'll have a good time coming up it's a happy holidays cheers while sue and nancy make a break for sunny spain <laughs> jody tries to break free from her mum i was gonna pay him a tenner to swap seats and he's next door and no one escapes the search in security take ages doing me <laughs> Passenger announcement. Last and final boarding call for passengers travelling to Jersey on EasyJet service EZY 7023. Please proceed immediately to gate two. It's like you think, try not to sound too scouse, and then you go, yeah. travelling to Jersey <laughs> on the easy. Because it is, you watch the television, you hear a scouse person, you think, oh God, do I sound like yeah. that? Do I sound like silly? <laughs> Corn ham, do you want some? What is it? Corn ham, do yes, you want please. some? 
bickering mum and daughter, Jane and Jodie, are on their way to southern Spain. What are you going to cry for me, Phil? Oh, yeah. And it looks like Jodie's husband, Phil, is going to be glad to see the back of them. Smile on his face. I've never seen him smile like that before. <laughs> Only another hour to the airport, Phil. I'm going on a holiday with my mum to Aramonte to see the Semana Santa festival, which is the Holy Week in Spain. Yeah, it's something totally different. I've never seen anything like this before, you know. So it will be, it will be something entirely new. Come on, cheer up, Jane. It's supposed to be a holiday. Where are you? Oh. Retired telephone engineer Dave is one of a bunch of enthusiasts who give up their time to volunteer at the airport. I've always been a, a supporter of the airport. I'm not, I'm not an anorak, in other words, a, a spotter as such. But I'm very proud of the airport and want to push it as much as I can. Can we just stop it? Where are we going to next? To the arrivals. Today, Dave and other volunteers are giving a group of local school kids a tour. Be careful. And it looks like he's got his work cut out. How long have you been doing tours in this airport for? Oh, 20 years. Dave reckons he knows how to keep this rabble in check. Now, good dance. Where's good dance? Good dance. Good dance is like. Um, it's... It's where? It's near Poland. It's in this body. Yeah. It's near Poland. Yeah. It's actually it's in, in Poland. Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Where's Bergerac? Where's Bergerac? Uh, OK, I know this one. Jersey. Turkey. Come on, kids. Bergerac. Jersey, where's Jersey? Is it in Jersey Europe? Jersey is, it in is it in Russia? Belgium. Belgium. Bergerac is in France. Oh, oh. OK. <clears throat> Which country is the Isle of Man in? Um, Europe, um, England, Ireland, Ireland, England. Nope. England I'm going to sit this one out, Scotland, I think. No. Wales. Wales. No. <laughs> it's, it's his own country. Oh, well, that's just a trick question. It surprises me that <laughs> how many kids don't really understand where these places are. They have no idea. They just get on the plane at this end and they turn up at the other end. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Come on, then. Mom. Yeah. Hurry yeah, come up. and come and help me carry it this. It doesn't take an hour to carry pick. that. I want some sweets. Can't you get some sweets on the plane? They don't sell sweets. Over in departures, Vickering Jane and Jody are heading to a religious festival in Spain. My mum is in a shop. She'll be in there for ages. Maybe a mother-daughter holiday will help them see eye to eye. Mom, come on, the gate's open. You need to hurry up. Then again? Yeah, come here. What? Maybe it won't. Let's go. My relationship with my mum when I was little, I think was difficult because I was apparently <laughs> very highly strung. She looked like a little angel, actually, when she was a little girl, but she wasn't. She always threw terrible tantrums when she was little, as if. She still does it now, actually. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of things, but that is it across the board, so I guess it must be true. We need to go. After a lifetime of bickering, these two do at least know when to give each other space. Can't wait to get on the plane, cos I'm in a different seat, so I won't have a earache anymore. Jodie's booked separate seats, so they're not stuck next to each other on the flight. I'm in. 27D. 27E. At least she thought she had. D and E aren't on the same row, cos it goes A, B, C. Oh, yeah, they are. Now Jodie's making a last-ditch attempt to break away. Are you on your own? Yeah. Would you like £10? Take the note, she's trying to sell to me. swap Ignore seats her. with me, so I don't have to sit next to my mother. <laughs> All right. Deal. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> nice try, Jodie, but it looks like your deal has just backfired. Right. Are you next to us anyway? <laughs> 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 he's next to us. I was going to pay him a tenner to swap seats, and he's next to us. 
Maybe the Holy Spirits are trying to tell them something. Here's to happy holidays. Cheers! Over in the nail bar and on their second drink, Worrywart Sue's airport anxieties have been washed right away. Salud. Salud. Dinero. Dinero. Amor. Amor? Oh, amor. Love, love, yes. Health, wealth, That'll love. do. That, that, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's I'll, have a bit, I'll have a bit of that. Perhaps it's because she knows she's got Nancy to look after her. You'll get what, you'll get what you're given. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our ups and downs, and we've both had them, haven't we? Oh, yes. When Sue was taken ill with suspected meningitis, it was Nancy who came to the rescue. The kids couldn't get hold of anybody, I and did, you were the yeah. first one there ringing the ambulance to get me off to hospital and yeah, things. So just... I would always say that I could rely on Nancy to be there if she needed to be there. I know Sue's always on the other end of the phone if I need her, and I know she knows the same. Yeah. I'm there if you need me. Yeah. They're lovely, Nancy. Thank you very much. Sue's all better now. Got sparkly shoes to go with my sparkly toes, look. And these golden girls and best friends have half an hour till their flight to Formentera. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Is this where I fall down the stairs and make no, the I was, I was dreading that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I am. Um, the foundation of friendship is to make each other laugh. Sorry. <laughs> Beat you. And support each other when, when needed. <laughs> that was a body swim, wasn't it? <laughs> I think that's exactly what we've done. Yeah, that's for what we've done. 25 years, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I'm very happy now. <laughs> very relaxed, ready to go. She's just a great friend, brilliant friend to have. Now it's time for the gallery. <laughs> Over on the information desk, Mark and Alan are getting creative with security tags. Waiting for Morph to come out. You don't know who Morph is? Yes. Mm. From, oh, the guy used to draw the pictures and yeah. stuff. Yeah, what? What was he? Dunk -a -dunk -a -dunk 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 yeah, no, I Liverpool, John Lennon Airport, can I help you? No. Bye bye. No, wrong. Uh -uh. I thought it was where it was Art Attack with yeah, Tony no, Hart. It, take heart with Tony Hart. Oh, shush. Stop being so presenting. This body scanner is different from the old ones. It's, it's, I believe it's radio wave, which is very, very safe to go through. So, the volunteers well, have been teaching been local school kids thing. about the airport. And they seem to have made quite an impression. One time there was this woman with a bomb in her high heel. Like, so they had to send her to jail and take her high heel down and then dismantle the bomb. And then we <laughs> learn about the police in the secret security area. And it's not just a mirror, it's a one way it's a one way to go to the airport. <laughs> so the tour was a success. But what do they think of their tour guide, Dave? It's yeah. quite nice, but I think really he's actually quite bossy. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit wild. Um, sometimes you can get children that uh, pay attention and that. Some of them just go a bit too wild, you know. Last stop, a chance to hang out with the big man himself. Not Dave, okay. that's John Lennon. Come on. Half an hour from the airport in Warrington, three generations of men from the Doody family are off to Dublin on a trip that's taken a lifetime to plan. Well, it's something you've been talking about doing the three years. I know, we've James been talking about it for years, haven't we? Well, since They've always had a natural, I say, lust to just learn more about it, where it come from, especially Dublin. But it's also a chance for James and Dad Steve to celebrate Grandad Brendan's special birthday. 80, what does that mean? Do you feel 80? No, I no. don't. Really. How old do you feel? 70. Being 80, I suppose, that's uh, as good a time as any. Yeah, I better do it now. There won't be. <laughs> there may not be another one, so well, it's a good time to do it. Yeah. They've got some trips planned to retrace Brendan's childhood and get in touch with their Irish roots. I might just uh, see if my old school is still there. I used to wish that that thing had burned down. <laughs> <laughs> Over 350,000 travellers make their way through the security hall every month. And no one is exempt from that intrusive procedure. 
the body search. Not even the station manager, Debbie. I'm the line manager of everybody that works in here, but I'm not treated that way at all until I am clean, until I'm cleared by them. So there's no way that I could say, well, actually, no, you don't do that. They will treat me the same as everybody else, follow the procedures. Doesn't matter that I'm their boss. Take ages doing me. <laughs> it's a skill that has to be learned, and as guinea pigs for the new trainees, Debbie and Mo offer up a range of challenges. It's good to, to practice on different sizes though, isn't it? And especially round like the, the booths. We could hide some of these things down some of um, Mo's cleavage, I think. <laughs> different body shapes are really difficult to, to search. And again, you know, to you might class. think every every bone you feel on me, you might think is a threat item and they'll check me more. Somebody wants someone <laughs> what's yeah. in your pocket and she went, it's me, it's me. Yep. <laughs> Over at the bar, <laughs> the three generations of Doody boys have arrived. And along with his son Steve and grandson James... Oh, brilliant. A shot of uh, spiced rolling. Birthday boy Brendan is getting into the holiday spirit. Liven it up a bit. Do you serve beer here? Can I get a beer as well, please? Can I get a beer as well, please? I was just thinking there's no father like son, it's like... Granddad like grandson. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> <You two. laughs> we are close. We've always gone along. Um, I mean, you looked after me. Yes. I mean, whenever my mum and dad were working after primary school, I'd always go to my grandma and granddad's. Cheers, Dad. Cheers, For uh, tomorrow. No, that's great. Thanks very much. I think as you get older, you probably need family more than you used to do, you know? I'm not alone. That's nice. Put yeah. some candles on, maybe. Eighty. Eighty, that'll fill it, won't it? It should be a good laugh. I'm excited to see different sides of my dad and granddad I've not seen before, and, you know, see my granddad in his, uh, in his Irish roots. Well, I was born in uh, 1935. The time just moves along. Time flies, really. And here we are, 80. Typical Irish yeah. tinker there, just grabbing every free magazine there is in sight. <laughs> yeah. With the flight about to depart, these doody boys have a past to rediscover and more memories yet to make. This trip, I hope, won't be the last. Meet you soon. Thanks Coming up. <laughs> whilst our holidaymakers soak up the culture. When you're standing next to the band and the drums beating, it's like... Or not. Out on the airfield, staff go to the extremes. Nice day for it. To keep the runway safe. Don't like heights. I get scared at the top of the stairs. Passenger and on plane. Last and final boarding call for passengers travelling to Larnaca on ECJ7. Proceed immediately to gate 8. Monica, Monica. Out on the runway, fire officer Dave Taggart. Okay. okay. Yeah, ready. And technician Keith Moran. Okay. Ground fire seven. Request permission to proceed from Yankee One to Charlie. A checking to make sure the surface is safe for landing and departing Just aircraft. Just make sure. Tower fire seven, holding Charlie. Request permission to enter runway two seven to commence the runway safe inspection test. They're pulling a special friction testing machine that apparently measures the grippiness of the tarmac. 65, 1,000 metres gone. It's a test they carry out every six months to ensure that there isn't too much rubber build-up from the skiddy landings. 2,000. And we're going to start braking now. Now do. After several runs, the results are in. All right, so we've got our uh, friction readings. Average speed was uh, 64.7 kilometers, uh, full distance. All sounds uh, interesting, lads, uh, but uh, the green, so what does that actually mean? Uh, yes, yeah, above the average, so it was 0.7 was the... Oh, sorry about this, folks. Might be a good time to go and make a cup of tea. 
but uh, at the moment it's been very successful. Uh, all the readings have been uh, uh, what we like in the green, and so uh, all in all, we're really happy. Oh, thank goodness for that. On the streets of Ayamonte in southern Spain, bickering mum and daughter, Jane and Jody are right in the thick of the Holy Week festivities. It looks like Jody might be enjoying things a little more than the mum. It's quite emotional, really. When you're standing next to the band and the drums beating, it's like... It's moving. I want one of them suits. Get me one of them tomorrow. Unfortunately, they don't have an sh open, short mouthpiece. <laughs> so did the shared experience of the religious festival provide that miracle cure for their relationship? I got to the point and I thought, if I've got to look at Jesus one more time, I'm going to jump in the river. No, I guess not. If you clip through there, we'll get in front of it. Ow! Ow! Oh, well, these two seem destined to bicker together forever. Okay, well, let's just go then, let's just go past them. But at least they know that nothing can drive them apart. Definitely can't live with each other. We can't live without each other either. I would miss you if she wasn't here. I'm glad I came with my mum. <laughs> so you shake your head, I don't care. I don't think we don't like each other. It's certain times when you're off on one, you're unbearable. I'd swap you for a goldfish. <laughs> Out on the airfield, the runway has passed its friction test with flying colours. Nice day for it. But that's no use if you can't see it. <laughs> Engineering manager Dave Batt and his team are checking the approach lights that guide the pilots in. Don't like heights. I get scared at the top of the stairs. Every day, Dave and his team have to make sure that all 200 bulbs are working properly. We have approach lighting on these crossbars that all have to be checked. This particular gantry is unique, I think, in airports that it goes into, into an estuary. The runway is so close to the banks of the Mersey that a 500 metre long gantry had to be specially constructed out over the water. If, the, if an aircraft was landing this way, it comes right over the approach light, sees the sequence, and lands on the other side of the threshold there onto the runway. If a bank of bulbs were to fail, it could confuse or distract the pilot at a critical moment. Well, this is really important, these approach lights for the runway. Um, if we have any significant failures on the lighting, you know, it could have a, an effect on the pilot's view on the runway and his interpretation of it. So it's really key that we check this every day. Okay, all working, as you can see. We check the transformers. Dave and his team have made light work of the gantry. Oh, look at the weather. Sunshine. Oh, wow. Over in arrivals, best friends Sue and Nancy are back from their girly break in Spain. Well, at least we've got some sunshine here anyway. The adventure we thought we were going to have turned out to be completely different, with the weather not being how it should be. We even went and had a look at the swimming pool and just kind of looked at it and went, oh, it's too cold for that. They may not have got lucky with the weather. Oh, I can't wait to come. But with their husbands at home, these golden girls made the most of their time away. It was a nice thing that happened to the barbecue. There was a really... Quite a dishy bloke, actually, wasn't he? He was only young. Oh, yes. Do tell. Miguel, his name was. Oh, oh Miguel, eh? I have to be 25 years younger. Mm. <laughs> you said that, not me. OK, only kidding. <laughs> these best friends were, of course, on best behaviour. Oh, I can't wait to get in that garden today. We had a laugh. That's the main thing. That's what you go for, isn't it? We need to go again. <laughs> well, the weather's better. Adios. Bye. Bye. Technology, the more you have, the more goes wrong. So, but like, now, I you see... I can't even type with these stupid thumb fingers and everything. Fat fingers. Got... You just... Fat fingers. The Doodies have returned home from their trip to Dublin for Grandad Brendan's 80th birthday. 
great trip. I enjoyed every minute of it. I always feel at home there. It's as if you hadn't been away all that long. They retraced Brendan's childhood and got in touch with their Irish roots. You look, this is my there, my parents. Parents here. That's that's before I was born, I think. Uh, this is where we used to live. The trip has brought them closer together than ever before. I think it maybe does give you a little bit of realisation that, you know, things are not forever and maybe you just have to hold on to them little bit of moments, you know, and, and value them for what they are. It does make mm. you appreciate things. I mean, especially me personally, like, I think, because I'm still quite young and naive in my ways, I've probably taken family for granted. It's nice to have that time and say, oh, we've been together, us three, you know, before it's too late. I know they have to grow up and do their own thing, but hey, we'll always be close. Uh, that, that, I hope they'll take better care of me when I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you should look in, maybe. <laughs> Putting a good home. There's a the thought. Uh, <laughs>